fun time. And now we are going to get a link to share so that people can join us. If you are watching online right now, we are going to post, I'm about to post a link so that if you want to be on screen with us and um, share in the fun times, you will be able to do that. Um, we are going to share the link into the Coastal Magic Authors and Attendees group. So if you are um, a member of that group, it will be easily accessible for you. If you are not yet a member of that group, you are welcome to, um, to pop in and request to join because um, it is a public group and it doesn't didn't take anything for you to do it. Um, and then that way you'll have the link to access to get in here. While I'm doing that, I will have, we are actually, Kiernan, we're down one author. Kiernan Kelly was supposed to be with us for our Mad Libs panel. Um, her day got delayed um, in a couple of ways, so she hasn't been able to sign on yet. We're hoping that she makes it in before the end of the panel. If not, um, I have her Mad Lib stuff and we'll, we'll do it uh, for her so that her presence is felt um, even while she's trying to make it through and get to someplace she can connect. In the meantime, I'm going to get the link sent out. Uh, David, why don't you introduce yourself and let people know who you are and what you write, and we'll have Nancy do the same thing, and I'll get this link sent out for people to join us. Sure. So I'm David R. Slayton. I'm the author of the Adam Binder novels, White Trash Warlock and Trailer Park Trickster, their urban fantasy about a broke gay witch from Guthrie, Oklahoma, where I'm from, and what he has to do to basically save his estranged family and reconcile with um, the third book, Deadbeat Druid, is out in October, and they're from Blackstone Publishing. So I also write epic fantasy, and I get to literally today announce that I just sold my first epic fantasy, a spinoff to the Warlock books, and a um, geeky gay rom-com. So that news is literally hitting Publishers Marketplace next week, and y'all get the scoop before anybody else. So. Yeah. I am so excited. I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am about both of those things being true things in the world right now. I've been having to sit on it for weeks and I've just been like vibrating, waiting for the emails. And it finally came in a couple hours ago. <laughs> so. I love it. I'm so glad that it happened before the panel started. So you were able to tell us about it. I know y'all y'all get the scoop. Like my newsletter hasn't even gone out. Coastal magic is finding out before anybody else. I love it. I love it. It makes me happy. Miss Nancy. Congratulations. Congratulations, David. I think that's wonderful. I'm really happy for you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Nancy Northcott. I write also a number of different things. Um, the biggest thing I'm doing this year is the reissue of my Light Mage Wars paranormal slash fantasy romances. But I also write with Jeannie Adams, uh, science fiction, uh, outer space mystery type series. And we will have a new book in that this spring or early summer, which will be the speaker for the dead. I write historical fantasy for Falstaff books. The latest release is The Steel Rose and the third volume in the um, Boar King's Honor trilogy will be out this summer. Mm -hmm. And finally, I write romantic suspense with um, spots an international covert organization. And the book that I took the Mad Libs material from is Renegade Mage, which is why it's bigger. Excellent. And um, I realized just now that I didn't even introduce the panel or what we're doing or who we are or why we are here. So um, for those of you who might be a little confused, um, I am Jennifer. This is our 10th anniversary of the Coastal Magic Convention. Um, so because we are not at the beach, we are doing everything virtually and everybody's in little boxes, but at least we're together in our little boxes. Um, so that makes me happy. We are going to play some Mad Libs, which is one of my very favorite things to do because it is absolutely hysterical. Uh, it's something we have done in person at Coastal Magic for the last few years, and it's been a really popular thing to do. So um, I'm glad that we're able to do it virtually. Um, the authors have been uh, given their deconstructed little passages, uh, so we'll be getting some words from you guys to include. I have my phone, my handy dandy phone over here next to my screen, so I can watch 
and see what um, what words people might have that are not able to join us. Um, I know there are, there are a couple of people who are at work who are peeking at the Postal Magic stuff on the side. So, um, and I know that because they said so. <laughs> so we're, we're going to watch in case anybody has anything that they would like to add. Uh, so I'll holler if somebody has a word that they post on, on the comments and we can add those in. And obviously if you guys, uh, we've got some readers joining the authors. So if you guys have words to contribute the parts of speech, um, definitely do that. And, um, and we'll make some fun things happen. All right. So Ms. Nancy, what book are, is, did your passage come from today? My passage came from Renegade Mage, which is the second book in the Light Mage Wars series. Okay, so we have, um, we have some holes to fill, ladies and gentlemen, and people of all sorts. We need a noun, so let's hear some nouns. Nancy's going to be taking notes. Oh. Everybody's muted. Come on now. Nobody has a noun that they want to share? How about hook? Hook, okay. Anybody else have another noun? Car. Car, okay. Well, we need two in a row. So let's get a couple more options for Nancy to choose from. Let's get a couple more nouns. Who else has a noun? Cat. Cat, David says cat. Let's do one more just so that there's some options to pick from. I'm gonna say umbrella just for kicks. Ooh. All right. So let's see here. Another word we need is a verb. So what's a good verb? I'm going to say, Dance. what did you say, Jody? Dance. Dance. I like that. Smash. Very cool. I'm going to say right. I like right. Tickle. Tickle. Cool. All right, now we need a verb that's in past tense. So I'm going to say eloped. Smushed. What, David? Smushed. OK. Who else? Climbed. I'm watching. Climbed. What, Jody? Climbed. Climbed. I like mm -hmm. it. I don't see anything online yet. Let's go, we need another noun. What's another fun noun? Shovel. Okay. <laughs> I like shovel. How about earphones? Mm. Um, Anybody computer. else? Computer, I like it, I like it. How about adjective? Who's got an adjective? Bloody. Bloody. Yeah, there we go. I'm just running in destructive channels today, isn't it, David? <laughs> <laughs> I write fantasy. <laughs> that works. That works. I'm going to say cluttered. That would be my house. Mm -hmm. Who else has an adjective? Fluffy. Fluffy. I like it. All right. We need another noun. Who's got another noun? I think I'll stay on theme and say dagger. Oh, nice. That's fluffy, a good one. The fluffy dagger. There you go. I like it. Um, I'm going to say palm tree. Palm tree. Um, all right, let's go on. Oh, we need another one. So I think ceiling is my going to be my contribution. Who has another noun that we can pick from? Beach, since we're Beach. all supposed to be on one again. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's see here. I think we have enough nouns for right now. Let's go body part. Fingernail. Uh, fingernail. Jody, what was yours? I. I. Okay. I think ankle. I'm going to ankle. I think I like kneecap. <laughs> All right. So there's some body part options. How about a verb? We need another verb. Um, I'm going to say skated. Flounce. Flounce is a good one. That is a good one. 
and I guess skate, not skated, because we don't need a past tense. Um, all right, so we need one more noun and we need an, another adjective, and then that will be all of Nancy's spaces filled. So what's another fun noun? I'm gonna nail. say male or nail. Male. Male? male, okay, male. M-A-L-E or M-A-I-L? Either one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. I'm gonna say skull. Okay. See, now you're drifting into my territory. So That's I'll go exactly with I will go with elephant. So. Oh, I like it. Well, that's what happened. I looked at the screen and I saw your shelf. And so I said skull. Uh, all right. And then adjective, our last one, skull. So let's say, I'm going to say crinkly. Who else has a good adjective? Scritchy. Stretchy. Okay. Slimy. Slimy. All right. So that's some good options. Gail, do okay. you need a minute to fit your words into your spaces or did you already put stuff in the in the spots? I need a minute, please. You need a minute? Okay. Yes, please. All right. While Gail is putting her words together, David is going to talk about um, his first book in the White Trash Warlock series. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about White Trash Warlock? Sure. So it's urban fantasy. It's got some adult themes. Every once in a while, someone's like, oh, is it YA? I'm like, no. Um, <laughs> but it's it deals with some heavy family stuff and i think some of you like jody have read it um mm -hmm. but it's I, adam essentially is he's estranged from his family he's a high school dropout living in a trailer park in oklahoma because his family had him committed when he started seeing things and hearing things because they thought he was mentally ill but it's actually his sight kicking in his ability to see into the other world then his brother and mother who again, he doesn't have a relationship with. They live in Denver, where I live now. And his brother's wife becomes possessed. And he starts to think, oh, maybe Adam was right about all this stuff. So he has to reach out for help. And Adam's excited to go help. And because he's a nice guy, with a side of, I get to say, I told you so. <laughs> and the situation in Denver is so much worse than he thought. When he gets there, he finds that all the other magical practitioners are dead. There's a malevolent spirit hanging over the city, threatening everything. And um, it leads to Adam basically having to turn to the last people he wants to for help, which are the elves, including um, the one who broke his heart. I have just been informed that I keep referring to Nancy as Gail, and I apologize for that. Gail um, Martin and Nancy Northcott not only do they write in the same genre in the same realm but they do a lot of panels together and so in my brain i just connect the two of them which i apologize i mean i didn't notice at all and if i'm going to be mistaken for somebody <laughs> being mistaken for gail is very flattering so don't worry about it well also, i know gail has so many pen names i just assumed you were one of her disguises <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't mistake you for Gail. I know that you're Nancy. I know exactly who you are, but apparently my brain just filled in. Apparently my brain is, is, is making its own Mad Libs at this point. I didn't even hear it, so no worries. Well, good. I'm glad. Well, I'm ready, I think. Are we ready? Okay. I'm ready. So. Okay. And for, the, um, for one of the noun ones, we skated over it because we had a lot of others, so I just picked one from up above. Yes. So, okay. Assuming I'm this car, he said in a flat, hard umbrella, what does that make me to you? I already have an idea, but smash me the whole picture. <laughs> she eloped her chin a notch, bracing herself for a computer. You're a fluffy mage, a palm tree several times over, and possibly a ghoul ally. A ceiling <laughs> alerted her as he shifted toward her, leaning so close she could feel his hook on her cheek. Her fingernail went dry, but she held her position. She couldn't let him flounce her. If I'm such a male, M-A-I-L, why the hell aren't you crinkly? <laughs> so. I love it. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, well it's, it's, well y'all did it. I just put them in I the also, slot. I also think that the M-A-L-E would have worked asking him why he's not crinkly. That would have been funny too. <laughs> true, true. All um, right, so 
Why don't you tell us what that should have been? Okay, it should have been. Assuming I'm this person, he said in a flat, hard voice, what does that make me to you? I already have an idea, but give me the whole picture. She raised her chin a notch, bracing herself for an outburst. You're a rogue mage, a murderer several times over, and possibly a ghoul ally. A creak alerted her as he shifted toward her, leaning so close she could feel his breath on her cheek. Her mouth went dry, but she held her position. She couldn't let him intimidate her. If I'm such a bastard, why the hell aren't you dead? And that's all of it. Ooh, that's impressive. Well, and our, was version, our version was very much not like that version. <laughs> which is Your the, version, the group version is quirkier, which is always fun. Yes, absolutely. So why don't you take a minute and tell us a little bit more about the book that that comes from and where that scene is and what's happening and um, what else we need to know about that series. Okay, well, um, this was the first book I sold. Um, I, I wrote another book that was a prequel to it called Renegade, I mean, called um, Mage Sentinel. But Griff is the central character in this book and he has a story that runs through the whole series. The light mages motto is to serve the light and they fight ghouls who are dark magic users and kidnap humans and mages for breeding, breeding and occasionally snacks because they can't breed among themselves. Um, and they are allied with void, void demons from the space between worlds. And the storyline that runs through the series is that the ghouls are trying to open a portal to bring the demons into this world. And if they succeed, it's game over. And each book has game over for us. Each book has a different romance in it, a different couple front and center. Um, it's magic. There aren't any shifters. I've never written a shifter romance because I just didn't feel like I had anything to bring to it. Um, so many people do it so well. Yeah. And so I just decided that territory has kind of been staked out, but I think I can do something with magic. So, yeah. and to me, I'm the comics track director for Continual. I've been reading comic books since I was eight years old. And so it's hard in the romance market to sell a superhero. To sell a wizard or a mage is easier, although not always easy. And in my head, they're all wearing capes all the time. But, <laughs> you know, a cape is a pretty cumbersome thing in a fight. I don't know how Batman manages it, but in my head, they're all wearing capes. So it, they're set in a contemporary Georgia, the state, not the Republic in Asia or Europe. I'm kind of fuzzy on where the geographic line is. And um, a lot of my pictures have the Okefenokee Swamp in the background because the setting is in the area around the Okefenokee. The books don't actually take place there, but um, we went there on a research trip and I had done the original research for what was then called Renegade um, online because I couldn't go. It's a five, six hour drive from here down there. And um, we were coming back from vacation in Florida and we detoured off I-95 to visit the Okefenokee. And at that point, Renegade was sold and had a publication date. So it was nailed down. It was, it was done. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember saying to my husband and son as we drove into the Okefenokee National Wildlife Refuge, I really hope this is as cool as I think it is because I'm stuck with it now. <laughs> but it's, you know, anybody who knows me will tell you that I am not nature woman. I like my surroundings climate controlled and my wildlife safely distant. And you know, we start from there and it's all good. I fell in love with the place. It's not really a swamp, it's a blackwater peat bog. And when, the, when there's not a boat going through to disturb the water, it is perfectly reflective. You could almost take a picture and turn it upside down yep. and not be sure which side was supposed to be up. And it's got all these big cypress trees, dripping Spanish moss, and it's just very atmospheric. It's, it's, gorgeous. it's so different from what we have in the Carolina Piedmont, which is red clay and pine trees. So um, in this particular book, six years ago, driven by grief and anger and frustration and a burning need for justice, he didn't think he would get any other way, Griff made a tragic mistake. Um, and he's been paying for that ever since. He right. was the Shire Reeve, the sheriff, of the Southeastern mages. And he found out that a counselor had been betraying his teams and they were taking casualties. 
and he, he also has a gift of foresight and he saw that the counselor would not face, he walked into the council room to make his accusation and saw that it would not be believed. And he blew the guy away and fought his way out of the building. Mm -hmm. And in the process, four of his deputies died. Uh, since then, his best friend has been killed. The woman he loved has been killed and another deputy has been killed. And he blames himself for that. And the mage world as a whole blames him and says he did right. it. Gotcha. Um, you'll have to read the book to find out exactly what happened. But yeah. those are weights on his conscience. And yeah. he and Val meet um, the first chapters online. So I don't think it's much of a spoiler. If I tell you, she has been captured by ghouls when she was trying to rescue mundanes, which is normal people. Mm -hmm. and they're about to kill her and she sends out a magical SOS and the person who answers it is Griff. Gotcha. And so from there, he's trying to convince her that he's not all the things they say he is because mm -hmm. there's, a, there's still a traitor on the Mage's Council, but he doesn't know who it is and he's trying to figure it out. And so the book is about their joint quest to find the traitor and of course they're falling in love Mm -hmm. along the way and he doesn't want to fall in love because to him falling in love with him is fatal right and she is now the sheriff his old job but because his credo is nobody else is gonna die or be injured for me he's always stepping in front of her which really just infuriates her it's kind of like excuse <laughs> me i have your old job i can handle this yeah but it's it's the effect of his past on him that makes him do that right and so that becomes very important at the very end of the book um because cool. he has to work through some of his inner demons and she has some disillusioning lessons to learn about the world she grew up in gotcha. but it does have you know it, it's a romance so it, it delivers on what a romance promises but there is one thing that will toward the end of the book that runs through the whole series and will be resolved in the last book and um, the third one, assuming Amazon approves it, will be up this weekend. And I will release the others at roughly two to three month intervals because I've got six of them written. And there are um, three more novels and two novellas still to be written. Wow, that's a lot. Well, you know, it is a lot, but it's a lot of fun. And cool. um, when the rights reverted to me and I had control again, and that's nothing against the original publisher, they put resources into it and they, they were great. But, you know, there's something to be said for having control. And right. so I'm coming back to the series, which has been a lot of fun. Cool. I, I just saw Kiernan's um, poking herself in here. She made it, yay! Looks like she's still connecting, so. Unmute yourself, unmute yourself. You're, uh oh, there we go. Yay, I'm so happy to see you. I'm sorry your morning oh was so God. crazy. It was nuts, oh my gosh. I can't believe what you have. They, they make you go through like 12 steps, like a 12 step program before you get on board the ship. Holy moly. <laughs> wow. Oh, Which goodness. is kind of funny considering how much alcohol there is. There's not enough alcohol on this ship right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Ordinarily, I wouldn't be. Oh my God, I'm on a ship. But I, I knew I had this panel this afternoon, and I'm like, I thought for sure I'd be in my cabin in time. And of course, it didn't work out that way. So here I am, no. late. To the well, I'm, I'm very happy to see your face. I'm so glad you made it on board and I'm happy that you made it here with us. So that me makes too. me that makes me happy. Um, I don't know that you're gonna be able to really like take notes and do things like that where you're at. So what maybe we can do is when we will pick your words, and I'll fill it in and then I'll copy and paste it and send it to you. And that way you can read it. At least then way it's coming from your, from your voice. That would be awesome. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, no problem. Let's do yours next. Just in case something happens and we lose your connection, we don't lose you. Okay. Um, lose a chance for this. Okay, so 
We'll go a, a little bit quicker through this one than we did with Nancy's, just because I don't want to take a chance on losing Cameron. Um, so let's see here. Uh, let's get let's get two options for each word, and that way I can pick one that is going to make it super funny. So I need some nouns. Give me some ideas for nouns, people. Glitter. Glitter. What's another Dragon. one? Just in case. Unicorn. Unicorn. Okay. How about Waffle. a verb? A verb in the past tense. Raced. Raced, and what else? Slid. Slid, okay. How about a couple more nouns? Dragon. Dragon, all right. Race car. Race car, okay. Mine. What, did you say mime, M-I-M-E? No, lion, L-I-O-N. Oh, lion, okay, L-I-O-N, okay. What else? Rubber band. Rubber band, I like it, I like it. Okay, how about an adjective? It's fun with this because Karen gets to pick words. <laughs> Sparkly. Which one, David? Sparkly. Sparkly, okay. Poisonous. Poisonous. Whoops. O U S. Okay. Um, a holiday. What's your favorite holiday, people? National Sparkly. Women's Day. <laughs> National Women's Day, okay. Mardi Gras. Okay, so we'll see. We'll pick one of those. All right, a body part. Eyelash. Eyelash, okay. What's one more just in case? Ankle. Ankle, okay. Um, need a couple more nouns that are plural, so multiple nouns kidneys kidneys yay kidneys what else light bulbs. i did i hear light bulbs yes light bulbs and then i heard buttons give me one or two more so we can fill in some more spots waffles mm. did you say waffles like the food yeah. Okay. Ooh. Sheep. Sheep. Okay. How about a couple of verbs? Spell. Spell. Okay. Impale. Oh. Impale. Oh, I like that one. All right. A couple more. Let's do some verbs in the past tense. What's a in past tense? Defenestrated. I just read that word. What does that word mean? To defenestrate someone is to throw them out a window. I Tell think I story. saw that on that. What is that? There's a, a something or other word of the day, and they always have these fancy, like old timey words. And I think I saw it on that. It's how the uh, Thirty Years' War started the defenestration of Prague. What? Okay, so that's my new thing I learned today. Um, let's see here. We need a verb with an ing ending, so like running or skating or something. So what's a verb? Stabbing. 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 Real quick, when I was listening to that, because my connection is not the greatest, I thought I heard menstruation. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Hey, you know, it's a thing that happens. It is a thing that's <laughs> happening. Okay, I need an adjective and I need a food stuff. So an adjective and a food. Pretzel. Apple. Pretzel, an apple, okay. And then how about an adjective? Old. Old, okay, give me one more just in case. Zany. What was it? Zany, Zany. and what? Okay. I'm gonna fill in some spots. Kiernan, you wanna tell people what book this passage comes from and a little bit about the book? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, this book is from um, A Weapon of Opportunity. It's a paranormal suspense novel. There are lots of things in there, um, all kinds of paranormal stuff. Um, my main character is a uh, detective who is, also a little psychic 
And there's a very big reason why that comes into play in the book. It's, I've also got um, another character in the book that I absolutely love. He's a little boy. Uh, he's autistic. And he has special powers, which is kind of amazing. I love this character. Um, so that's, and that's pretty much the book. And it's, a, it's kind of a murder who done it. Almost done, almost done. Um, is it a standalone or is it in a series? No, it is a standalone. It is a one and only. It was actually, it was published actually uh, many years ago through Lucid and then I re-edited re it and uh, re-released it recently. I'm trying to put in your words. I'm sorry. I'm trying to go as quick as I can. No, you're doing a fine job. I just feel bad about the dead air. Usually I'm good at just babbling. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I just... we were... I'm missing everybody's faces in person. Tell us about your cruise. Um, yeah, well, my son's my son got married on a Disney cruise on the Dream, and uh, it was ten, for his 10th anniversary, we we're supposed to go on, a, on an anniversary cruise, but unfortunately his 10th anniversary fell in 2020. So that was not going to happen. And then it wasn't going to happen. We said, well, we'll do it in 2021. And then that wasn't going to happen. So we finally decided, okay, we think it's safe enough now. They go through enough steps and precautions. We're all vaccinated. We'll do it in 2022. And then I found out it was the weekend of Coastal. I'm like, oh, I can't do it. Yeah, I'm going to Coastal. But then when Coastal went by virtual, I said, okay, this universe telling me I should get on that ship. So that's why I'm here. I am on the ship. It's a three-day cruise. We're going just to Castaway Cay, which is Disney's private island. Uh, and then a day at sea. And then I'm home again. So it's real quick. But we've also got my grandson, who is also autistic. Um, actually, which is weird because I wrote the autistic child character before my grandson was born. Go figure. Um, but uh, he, we've got him on board. This is his first cruise. So it's going to be exciting for, for us to see how he reacts to everything. OK. Karen, I'm about to take a picture of this. And send it to okay. you so that you can read it, okay? Okay. All right, here it comes. As soon as I can get my camera open here. There we go. And it's coming to you momentarily. How is it coming? I'm going to send it to you in Facebook Messenger. Can you get it that way? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Okay. So K I E R Kiernan, send. Let me know if you can't read anything. Okay. I just think it. you got it. I got it. Cool. Okay. okay. All right. Now I'm trying to trying to read it. It's it's sideways and it won't let me turn my phone won't let me turn it but i i i think i can handle this okay are we ready yes okay sometimes being a unicorn has its merits <laughs> I, I would assume it does truthfully david <laughs> impaled the term ghost as a unicorn you can do that as one does it reminded him of himself as a dragon running around draped in his mother's glittered white linen sheets uh, on Mardi Gras with eye holes cut out crookedly, the ankle of his kids peeking out from underneath. And that reminded him of the smell of rubber bands and cinnamon which is a delightful aroma and the, the taste of chocolate and the myriad 
I'm sorry, my phone keeps turning. And a myriad blah, blah, of other half remembered kidneys that became merely waffles themselves. Spelling being chief among them. Yeah, okay. God, he missed sex most of all. Uh, I, I can't even say that word. Pretzel. No, it's the one where you shove somebody out the window. Oh, yeah. Defen that's right. That's Defenestrated. Defen okay, that's the one. <laughs> uh, more than a 12-year-old beer <laughs> from the tap. God, more than a hand rolled Cuban or a thick rare pretzel swimming in fried onions and grease. Oh, gross. Hell, he missed sex more than he missed stabbing. Okay. And I, think yeah, I don't think I, can I don't think the real story is goes like that. <laughs> it does not go like that. Uh, it's close. Although, although the real. Uh, uh, it, the main character is a unicorn is an is intriguing thought. Yes, it is. It is indeed very intriguing. Um, I have not written a unicorn chapter, um, mostly because my friend B.A. Tortuga wrote one and I didn't want to be a cop cat. So I didn't uh, write a unicorn chapter. Gotcha. There are no chapters in this book, actually. It's one of the few paranormals I've ever written that doesn't have a chapter. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Do you want to, were you able to, I sent you what the actual passage was, was really supposed to say? Um, yeah, let me, let me get to And I turned computer. it so that you didn't have to turn your phone. So you should be able to okay. hopefully get through that without losing it. Okay, wait one second. Um, while Kiernan finds that, I've got um, a raffle copter giveaway that's posted in the authors and attendees link, and I just put the link in the chat. So, sorry, just wanted to say that real quick. Absolutely, no problem. Yeah, we've got um, at the end of the Coastal Magic Weekend, we'll have a little 30 minute uh, Zoom chat for anybody who wants to come and join and pop on and talk about things that they really enjoyed during the weekend and um, things that maybe they didn't like so much, things that they missed, things that they um, are looking forward to for next year once we're all in person. Just a nice little wrap up end of weekend thing. And uh, we do have some prizes to give away during that. So Nancy's will be one of those. Um, I think we lost Kiernan entirely. Kiernan, did we lose you? We're right here. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I, I can hear you. I can't see you, but I can hear you. Did you get your, right, your passage? Good. I do have my passage. I'll just read it to you before I start puts in with the video. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, sometimes being a ghost had, it, had its merit. Truthfully, David hated the term ghost. It reminded him of himself as a kid running around draped in his mother's crisp white linen sheets on Halloween eyes cut out crookedly, the toes of his head sticking out from underneath. And that reminded him of the smell of tart apples and cinnamon and the taste of chocolate and a myriad of other half-remembered pleasures that have become mere ghosts themselves. Mm -hmm. Sex being among them. God, he missed sex most of all. He missed it more than a frosty beer fresh from the tap, even more than a hand-rolled Cuban or a thick rare hamburger swimming in fried onions and grease. Hell, he missed sex more than he missed breathing. Gotcha. So yeah, that's a very different story. <laughs> there yes. are no unicorns in that story. <laughs> there are no, there are no unicorns in that story. All righty. So I am very glad that you that you managed to get in in time to do that. David, let's get yeah. your let's get yours done. Um, we have we have a lot. I think I'm just gonna ask for like one or two words. And then we're going to move on super quick so we don't end up missing a chance to read everything. So let's we can go. Also, if you want, why don't we just do the first half, the first eight? Just do the first I'll, eight? Yeah, okay. and I read it, I'll read the second paragraph. That way, because that you're right, that's like 17 things. That's a lot. So let's Okay, so we'll I'll, do the first the eight. Whole. Sounds good. All right, so let's get a couple nouns. Dental floss. 
I Dental floss. Broomstick. Keep them coming, keep them weird. <laughs> Inkwell. Inkwell. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good one. All right. Pine to What was that? Um, pine cone. Tentacle. Pine cone? Pine cone and tentacle, I think I heard. Okay, I moved on to number two, by the way. Yes. Okay, give me one more for number two. Um, hair band. <laughs> the band, uh, you know what? I don't want to know. I want. I'm gonna imagine it's like you know the '80s rockers. The... I'm 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 down for that. Okay. Um, is the third one a verb? It is. All right, give me some verbs, guys. Um, leap, leap. Okay. Leap, leap, leap like a frog. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm gonna use your word and say defenestrate. I have that coming. One more. <laughs> um, let's say laugh. Okay. All right, number four, which I think is another noun. Mm -hmm. Popsicle. Yes. Anybody else got a noun to suggest? Butter knife. Yeah. Ooh. What what was it? Butter, Butter knife. knife. Butter knife, nice. I think I'll put one in there for Kiernan's sake and say, um, Kiernan, what's your favorite drink on the boat? Oh, um, let's go with a pina colada. Nice. Can you tell I really want to be on the boat with Kiernan? <laughs> what? Right, I think I think five is another noun. Five is another noun. It's a plural noun. Yes. Oh, I need a plural noun, please. Yeah, I'm I checking the, I'm checking the comments to see if there's anybody online watching to that are giving us words. Kiernan, you might have to say yours again. I think I talked over you. Islands. Nice. Bookends. Bookends. Handy as a murder weapon too. All right, one more. Okay, then we need a gerund. So we need a, uh, a verb ending in ing. Cringing. Like it. Spanking. Baking? Spanking. <laughs> I'm keeping it. Heather, you seem like you got a smile. You got one for me? Um, flicking. Flicking? Yeah. That's a good one. All right, I need a, I think it's an adjective. Yep, I need an adjective. Dastardly. Dastardly or bastardly? Dastardly with a D. Man, I need better speakers on this thing. <laughs> someone, someone in the chat um, offered up douchebag. I'm gonna put this, that's a good one. Okay, give me one more adjective. Rowdy. Nice. Ooh, I like that. Okay, one more, um, one more adjective. Frigid. Frigid. Anyone else? Um, fear. Fear? Sorry. Like fear. Fear. Fears. F I Perfect. Thank you. Oh, fear. There I, we go. Fears. I really, I. It's funny. I was like, oh, I should look these speakers up today, and I didn't. I'm like, oh, I really wish I had. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're ready, then we shall begin. Nice. So, not all magicians go to schools of dental floss. Adam Binder has the sight. It's a hairband that runs in his bloodline. The ability to defenestrate beyond this world and into another popsicle of magic populated by elves, gnomes, and islands of every kind. But for much of Adam's life, the power has been a, cur has been a, um, a curse, spanking friendships, worrying his douchebag family, and fueling his, fueling his fierce father's rage. A lot of that wow. I think worked. <laughs> wow, that's pretty impressive, quite frankly. 
<laughs> well done, everyone. Um, so here's the actual text. Not all magicians go to schools of magic. Adam Binder has the sight. It's a power that runs in his bloodline. The ability to see beyond this world and into another. A realm of magic populated by elves, gnomes, and spirits of every kind. But for much of Adam's life, that power has been cursed, hindering friendships, worrying his backwoods family, and fueling his abusive father's rage. Very nice. I I like it. Am, yeah, I think I think while it was funny, our words fitting into that space, it actually didn't change the whole feeling too terribly much. Probably I like the popsicles. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. So that actually timed out pretty well. We've got a few minutes to have um, each of you guys, if you, um, Nancy, David, and Kiernan, if you want to share um, anything that you might have coming out soon, um, anything that any appearances you might be making, if you're going to do uh, virtual events or in-person events later in the year that people can find you at, and then maybe where people can find you online to learn more about you and your books. Uh, Kiernan, let's start with you again, just in case we lose you. Oh, okay. Um, I uh, am working on a bunch of stuff that should be coming out over the next few months. Um, there are several, there's a, a sequel to Mad About the Hatter. Um, there is, uh, which is under my Dakota Chase pen name. There is another novel called uh, Writing Lucifer. There's uh, another uh in the uh, Midnight Rodeo series, I've got another story coming in uh, called Heavy Petting and a few other things that I'm working on. And then I will be at the Frolicon in Atlanta in May. And I will be at GRL as a featured author in October. Very in cool. Virginia. All right. And where do people find you online if they want to learn more? online. I am mostly on Facebook. That's probably the easiest way to find me. Um, my group is called Pyramids of the Monsters. Feel free to join it. And uh, I'm Karen and Kelly on Facebook. Very cool. All right, Nancy? Well, you can find me at nancynorthcott.com and on Twitter where I'm at Nancy Northcott. That's probably where I spend the most time on social media. Uh, Renegade Mage is out. The Deadly Orb will be out this weekend or within the next few days. The Speaker for All is coming this spring, and the Last Four King book, uh, The King's Champion, will be out in early summer. You can find me in person at RavenCon and Con Carolinas, and virtually a lot of the time on Continual. Right. Very cool. And David? So the easiest place to find me online is davidrslayton.com. Just don't forget the I, or sorry, the R. There's mm -hmm. a lot of David Slaytons out there in the world, including some scary Florida man types that you might encounter in, you know, the upper glades. So don't forget the R, David R. Slayton. Like Nancy, I'm most active on Twitter if you're looking to interact with me with social media, but I'm everywhere but TikTok because I just can't dance. I gave up. I'm not that, I'm not funny enough for TikTok, but I'm on Instagram. Um, if you're interested in Gothic gardening, I plant a ton of interesting weird flowers and we'll post a million pictures of those in the spring. And yeah, find me on Twitter is the best place to interact. But also all of my pre-order stuff, like my links and things are up on my website. And I'll be at the Tucson Festival of Books next month, okay. along with some other urban fantasy authors. And I will think that's all I've got for appearances right now. But my website, I usually try to keep it updated with where I'll be. Cool. And um, the Adam Binder series wraps up in the fall with Dead Beat Drew, the third book. And then I have a lot of other books coming your way very soon. Like I said, my newsletter is going out about an hour if you want <laughs> more details. And And we uh, already but, got the juicy scoop. The juicy scoop, yeah. The juicy scoop. All right. So thank all of you very much for playing along with our silly games. Um, thank you to the readers who participated and gave us some words to make things make things fun. Um, thank you to those of you who are watching online and for um, offering up douchebag. That was a perfect fit. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys for uh, the rest of our programming. We've got lots of good things happening the rest of the day and then tomorrow and even on Sunday. So uh, check out the schedule at coastalmagicconvention.com. Uh, we're posting as things come live. We're posting on the, the Facebook page 
And then later on after the fact, we'll take those things and add them onto the YouTube channel. Unfortunately, if you're watching through YouTube, all of that is going to be after the fact. There's not going to be any way to see anything live there. But at least if you don't do Facebook, you do have a chance to see things. Um, it's just going to be a little bit delayed. So um, I appreciate all of you. Thank you very much for spending a little of your afternoon with me. And I will see you later in the weekend. Bye, all. Thank you, Thank you everybody.